We have come to a wasteland without human life. Your duty, Hephaestus, is to these instructions that Father Zeus has laid on you to harness this malefactor in unbreakable bonds. For it was the fire and all of its arts that he stole and bestowed upon men. For such a crime, he must surely pay penalties to the gods, to be taught acceptance to the rule, and to stop his habit of favoring mankind. For you, your orders are at an end, and there's no further obstacle. I, myself, however, lack the hardness to put one who is my kin forcibly in bonds. Yet, it is absolutely necessary for me to be this hard, because it is a heavy matter to disregard the word of Father's use. Son of Themis, right in her counsel, you are over lofty in your designs. Against your will and my will too, I shall nail you to this mountain uninhabited by men in forged fetters that cannot be undone. Here you will know neither the voice nor the form of any mortal. The burden of your ever-present agony will weigh you down, for the one who is to alleviate it is not yet born. Such is your reward for your habit of favouring mankind, for as a man you did not cower before the wrath of the gods when you bestowed privileges upon men beyond what was just. In return for this, you shall keep guard on this unlovely cliff, shackled still and unsleeping with no flexing of your legs. Many will be the wails and laments you voice, uselessly. For the wrath of Zeus is inexorable. Every ruler new to power is harsh. Now then, why your delay and pity? They are in vain. Why not loathe the one who's the god's worst enemy? Have you betrayed your prerogatives to men? Kinship is strangely powerful, I tell you, as is comradeship. I agree. But how can Father Zeus's words be disobeyed? Do you not fear this more? Yes. You have always been ruthless and overbearing. This is because there's no remedy in worrying for Prometheus here. And you're not to waste effort where it is useless. Oh, the worth of my hands, how much I hate you. Why test it? I'm simply saying your skill has nothing to do with the present task. Even so? I wish it had fallen to someone else. Everything is a burden except ruling over gods. No one is free except Zeus. I know it by these things on his wrists and I cannot deny it. You hurry to put those bonds around Prometheus so that Father Zeus would not see you dawdling. Look, the fetters are here to see, ready to hand. Thrown round his arms and hammered down, nailed to the rocks. You can see there was no idling. Left no slack at all. He's clever at finding a way out, even from impossibilities. His arms are fixed beyond getting free. Securely so that he learns that he's slower than Zeus in all his cleverness. No one will rightly find fault with me. Except Prometheus. <laughs> You nailed an adamantine wedge's remorseless point right through his chest. Poor Prometheus, I lament for your ordeal. Here you are, hesitating again and lamenting over Zeus's enemies. Watch you don't end up pitting yourself. Are you seeing a sight hard for your eyes to watch? I see Prometheus getting what he deserves. I do this under compulsion. Do not give me too many orders. On my oath, I will give you orders and urge you on loudly too. Look, the work is done, no lengthy labor. Our work has an overseer, a heavy one. Your voice's tone matches your appearance. Grow soft, if you will. 
But don't write back to me that my temper is harsh and abjure it. Let us go. He has bonds round his lips. Now, do your outrages here, and plunder the gods' prerogatives, and attach them to ephemeral mankind. What part of this ordeal do you think mortal men can make lighter for you? <laughs> the gods call you Prometheus, but that name is false. For you yourself need foresight to roll your way out of skilled handiwork like this. <laughs> sky divine wind swift winged and river springs and ocean waves bright laughter beyond counting the earth the mother of all and the sun circle which sees all I call on you see the kind of suffering I have a man at the hands of gods. See the kind of torments which are to wear me away for the time of numberless years. Such is the shameful bondage which the blessed gods, new captain, has invented against me. Oh, I grow with the pain, both present and to come. Yet what I'm not saying. I have accurate foreknowledge of all that is to be, and no pain will come to me unexpectedly. I must bear my destined lot as easily as I can, knowing the power of fate cannot be fought. It was forgiving prerogatives to men that I am yoked in these harsh constraints. miserable wretch. I hunted down fire from its source to steal it. And it has proved mankind's teacher in every craft and their great resource. Such are the wanderings for which I pay penalty under the open sky in bonds nailed fast. this? What sound, what scent has winged towards me invisibly? Is it sped here by God, or come from men? Or does it mix these? Has someone come to this mountain at the world's end to view my misery? Or with what wish then? See me in bonds, a god ill-fated. 
the enemy of Zeus. The one who came to be hated by all the gods that frequent the courts of Zeus. All because of his too great friendship for men. All that approaches is fearsome for me. Have no fear. Rapid winds bore me here as my escort. Echoes from hammered iron had pierced our inmost cave. It struck and shocked me out of my shy reserve. I came unshod. I sped in this wing born carriage. A lament for me. Seeing what kind of bond I am fastened, and must endure as its unenviable guard. I do see Prometheus, but a mist of fear rushed over my eyes, filling them with tears, and I saw your body put to wither here, tortured by adamantine bonds. New masters were ruling in guide Olympus's home. Fresh rules without due base are Zeus's power. What was mighty before he is now obliterated. If only he had sent me below the earth, and down where Hades receives the dead into boundless Tartarus, so that no god or any other would be rejoicing over me here. Now, a thing shaken and battered, a miserable wretch, I suffer for my enemy's delight. Who among the gods is so hard of heart they have to find delight in this? Who does not share resentment at your misery Except, of course, Zeus. Always rancorous and unbending in purpose, he subdues the race of Uranus and will not cease before either he sates his heart or someone by some ruse gains the rule that is hard to attain. I swear, the Blessed One's president will yet have the need of me. Tortured though I am in strong fetters round my limbs, to reveal the new plan through which he is to be despoiled of his scepter and prerogatives. He will not charm me at all with honey-tongued spells of persuasion, any more than I will ever cower beneath harsh threats and give this information away. Before he looses me from cruel bonds and is willing to pay penalty for this torture. You are too headstrong and yield not at all in your bitter agony. Your mouth is too free in speech. My mind, however, is pierced by sharp fear. My dread is for you, and what happens? Wherever it will be, your fate is to come ashore and see the end of this pain. For Cronus' son has a nature beyond reach, and a quite inexorable heart. I know that he is harsh and keeps justice to himself. Still, I think he will one day soften in temper when he is smashed in this way. Once he has calmed his obdurate anger, he will one day enter a bond of friendship with me. Eager joining with eager. Reveal the whole story. Tell us what charge Zeus has taken that he torture you so ignominiously and harshly. Inform us, unless you were hurt in some way by speaking. Yes. Even to speak of these things is painful. But silence too gives me pain. In every way they are a cruel fate. As soon as the divine powers became angry and faction stirred between them all, with some wishing to throw Cronus from his seat so that Zeus, of course, might be lord. While others were eager for quite the opposite, that Zeus should never rule the gods. Then, despite my best advice, I was unable to dissuade the titans, children of heaven and earth scorning crafty means. They thought in their arrogant might, that they would effortlessly become the masters by violence. But I had been given prophecy, more than once by my mother Themis and Earth, how the future would be fulfilled. That those who came out superior must prevail, not by strength or violence, but by cunning. 
quite the best of the courses then to have seemed to be to join my mother to me in a willing stand to aid a willing Zeus. And through my counsels, the hidden black depths of Tartarus conceal the ancient born Cronus and all his allies. Although the tyrant of the guards received such help from me, he has answered me with this evil reward. In tyranny, somehow this vice, not to trust one's friends. Well, I see you a question then. On what charge she tortures me, this I shall make clear. So soon as he was seated on his father's throne, he at once assigned various prerogatives to deities and distributed command. But of wretched mortals he took no account. Instead, he desired to obliterate their whole race and to generate another from new. In this he had no opposition except mine. But I was daring. I set men free from being smashed into destruction and going to Hades. That is why I tell you I am bent in these agonies, as painful to suffer as they are pitiable to see. After being readier with pity for mortals, I was not myself held worthy of getting it must have been brought ruthlessly into line like this. A sight to bring Zeus infamy. Anyone who does not share resentment at your ordeal Prometheus has a heart of iron indeed. I would not have wished to look upon it myself, and now that I have looked, I am hurt to the core. Yes, I truly am pitiable for friends to look at. You didn't perhaps go even further than you said. I did. I stopped men from foreseeing their death. What sort of remedy did you find for this affliction? I gave blind hopes a home within them. This was a great benefit you gave men. In addition, however, I bestowed fire on them. And now ephemeral men possess fire's bright flame? They do. And from it they will learn many crafts. Those were the charges against you, I suppose, upon which Zeus... Tortures me? Yes and in no way relents from the evil he does me. And is no end set for your ordeal? No, no, except when Zeus himself decides. And he will decide. How? What hope is there? Do you not see that you did wrong? But that you did do wrong, I have no pleasure myself in saying, while you have the pain. Let us drop this, however, and you seek some means to be free from your ordeal. A light thing for someone with his feet out of harm's way, to urge and advise the one in trouble. Everything of this I knew. I did wrong willingly. Willingly I will not deny, and in helping mortals I found misery myself. I swear, I did not think at all the punishments like these would have me withering away in lofty crags and getting this desolate, lonely mountain. Please, do not wait for the sufferings I have here, but step down and hear things are on the way to happening. So you learn the whole tale through to its end. Let me persuade you. Please, let me persuade you. Share the troubles of one now struggling to endure this. For misery wanders around and settles now upon one person, now upon another. We were not unwilling to have you urge this on as Prometheus. And now, with light step, I shall leave the seat in which I sped rapidly, and the sacred heaven passageway of birds, and set foot on this jagged land. 
I desire to hear your miseries all through. I come to you, Prometheus, and reach a long journey's end. Know that I share the pain of your misfortunes. Kinship, I think, compels me forward in this way, and apart from kin, there is no one I shall give greater due than you. You will learn that this is true, and it is not in me to speak empty compliments. So come, indicate what I should do to help you. You shall never say you have a friend more sure than Arsenius. What? What's this? You too have come to view my miseries. And how did you brave leaving the stream named for you and its rock-roofed natural caverns to come to the land that Mother Zion? Have you come to observe my misfortunes and share resentment at my troubles? Look at the sights. Here is the friend of Zeus, the one who helped establish his rule. And see what pains I am bent in by him. I do see, Prometheus, and yes, I do wish to give you the best advice, however ingenious you are. Learn to know yourself, modify your way for new ones. There is also a new ruler amongst the gods. If you go on in this way, hurling out harsh words, sharp with anger, Zeus might perhaps hear you. Though he is seated far off and higher. And then... The mass of your present ordeals would seem child's play. No, you poor wretch, let go of the angry passions you have and seek release from this disaster. Perhaps, perhaps I seem old-fashioned in what I say. The truth is, your state like this, Prometheus, is the wages of a tongue too lofty in its speech. Aren't you humble yet? And don't you yet yield to your troubles? Do you wish to add others to your present ones? Use me as a teacher, and you won't kick against the pricks when you see a monarch in power who is harsh and not answerable, and... Now I will go and try to see if I can free you from this ordeal. And you stay quiet. You don't speak too violently. Or don't you know, definitely, with your extreme intelligence, that the punishment is inflicted upon a, 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 a wild tongue? I envy you. For escaping the blame when you have shared everything courageously with me. And now let be. And don't concern yourself. You will absolutely not persuade Zeus. He is not easily persuaded. Rather, keep looking out for yourself, so that you don't get hurt through your journey. You are much better at advising those close to you other than yourself. Facts, not words, are my evidence. Now I am eager. Don't pull me back. I have confident guess. Confident that this will give me the gift and a release from this ordeal. In part, I commend you and will never stop doing so. For you're not lacking in eager concern. Make no effort, however. Your efforts for me will be wasted. And no help, even though you wish to make some effort. No, stay quiet, and keep yourself out of the way, for even in my misfortunes, I would wish it to harm as few as possible. Since what happens to my brother Atlas oppresses me. He stands in western parts, supporting on his shoulders earth's and heaven's pillar. A burden not easy for the arms. That child of earth too. The inhabitants of Cilician Caves. Hostile, monstrous with a hundred heads. I saw and pitied him as he was violently overcome. Typhon, furious for war, who stood against all the gods, hissing terror with dreadful jewels. 
and to flash a fierce gleam from his eyes, intent on the violence ruin of tyranny. Zeus's unsleeping bolts came to him, however. The lightning which descends in a blast of flames, it hit him out of his lofty boastings. He was struck to the very soul of his being, blazing like a coal, and his strength blasted from him in thunder. Useless now. And sprawled flat, his body lies near the sea mammals. Pressed beneath the roots of Etna, and seated on its topmost peak, Hephaestus earned her glowing smithy, from which rivers of fire will one day erupt and devour fertile Sicily with savage jewels. Such is the anger Typhon will send boiling upwards in red-hot bolts of blasting fire. A storm none may approach, although he is burnt to embers by Zeus's lightning. But you are not without experience, nor do you need me as a teacher. Save yourself as you know how while I shall ensure my present fortune to the dregs, until Zeus's mind relents from anger. Surely you know, Prometheus, that words are doctors for a sick temper. Yes, if one softens a heart at the right moment and does not forcibly reduce swollen passions. For what loss do you see in eager intention and boldness? Tell me. Wasted effort and simple-minded foolishness. To be sick with this weakness, the most profit lies in a man good of sense seeming not to be sensible. This fault will seem to be mine. Your words are for sending you back home, clearly. Yes, in case your laments for me bring you enmity. You mean from the one who is newly seated on the all-powerful throne? Guard against his heart becoming ever aggrieved. Your disaster is my teacher, Prometheus. Be on your way. Take yourself off. Keep to your present mind. Your words urge me on when I'm already starting. My bird-like steed is brushing heaven's wide path with its wings. It would clearly be glad to rest its limbs in its home stable. I lament to you, Prometheus, in your evil fate. Tears are dripping from my tender eyes. I let them pour out, streaming and soaking my cheek. This is how Zeus rules unsparingly with private laws and displaying the arrogant power of his spear to those former gods. The whole earth has already cried out its lament. Men lament for your magnificence and rank, ancient in splendor. And that of your kin and all mortal man inhabiting homes settled here share the hurt and pain you bear to their great ament. The inhabitants of Gorkakis, well, those maidens fearless in battle, and Scythia's hordes, who occupy the furthest place on earth around the Odyssey's lake. And Arabia's flower, its warriors, those who inhabit a city on high sheer cliffs near Caucasus. Only one other titan before did I see in such ordeals, subdued by the outrage of untiring bonds, a god, Atlas, preeminent in the power of his strength who supports earth and heaven with its sky on his back like a covering roof. Hades is black recess and the earth is roaring below, and rivers, springs, and sacred flow are lamenting your piteous pain. Don't think, no, don't, that I keep silent through pride. But painful awareness gnaws my heart when I see myself 
treated so contemptuously. Yet who else but myself completely determined their prerogatives for these new gods? I keep silent on that, however, for I would be telling you when you already know. I will tell you, without any blame for mankind, and explain the good will in what I have given them. At first they had sight but saw to no effect, had hearing but did not hear, confusing everything randomly like dream shapes for the length of their life. And they knew neither brick-built houses catching the sun, nor carpentry, but dug out underground homes like scurrying ants in sunless tunnelled caves. They had no sure mark for either winter's coming or that of flowery spring and fruitful summer, but did everything without design until, that is, I showed them the risings and settings of the stars, so hard to determine. Number two. Supreme among skills I invented for them. And letters in combination, the record of all things, the mother and crafter of poetry. I was first too in yoking and harnessing beasts, to be subservient and to take over from man their greatest exertions. And I brought horses to accept the reins beneath a chariot that ornament of extreme wealth's luxury. Next, no one else but myself invented ships to carry sailors, roaming the sea on wings of linen cloth. Although I had invented, wretch that I am, such clever means for men, I have myself no stratagem to free me from the torment I have now. You have suffered a shameful outrage. Your wits have been taken away. And you wander. And like some bad doctor, you have fallen ill and lost your spirit. And you cannot discover the kinds of medicine to cure yourself. When you hear the rest from me, you will be amazed at what skills and means I devised. The greatest of them? If any man fell ill, there was nothing in defence, either to eat or rub in, or yet to drink. And men were wasting away for lack of medicines, until the time I showed them the mixing of gentle remedies with which they drive away all sickness. Also I set out, in order, many ways of divination. I was the first to judge from dreams what must be reality. I explained for them difficult omens from people's remarks and signs met on their journeys. I precisely defined the flight of birds of prey, both favourable and sinister in nature. The habits of life they can have and the enmities and affections between one another. And their perchings together, the smoothness of entrails too. What colour the gallbladder would have when marking the god's pleasure and the mottling of a well-shaped liver. I had men burn the thigh bones and long spine wrapped in fat. And I put them on their way into the difficult skill of marking these signs and gave them clear sight from flames of indications which were previously obscure. So much for things of that kind. But the benefits for many hidden below the earth from bronze, iron, silver and gold. Who will say he discovered them before myself? No one, I am sure, unless he wishes to talk empty nonsense. To put everything briefly together. 
You should understand that men have all the skills from Prometheus. Don't then help men unduly, but neglect yourself and your misfortune. For I have good hopes that you will yet be freed from these bonds, and be no less strong than Zeus. Fate who brings all to fulfillment is not yet destined to accomplish that this way. But I am to escape my bonds while bent like this in countless agonies and pains. Skill is far weaker than the inevitable. So who is at the helm of the inevitable? The fates and the ever-mindful furies. Three in form. Is Zeus then weaker than they? He'll not escape what is destined, certainly. Why? What is destined for Zeus except to rule forever? You'll learn nothing further of this. And don't intrigue me. It must be some holy secret you're keeping close, I suppose. Mention another subject. It is not at all the moment to speak of this one. Rather, it must be concealed as much as possible. For it is by keeping it safe that I am to escape my shameful bonds and torments. Maybe he who directs all things, Zeus, never set his power to oppose my thinking. Nor I ever cease to approach the gods at the sacred feast where oxen are killed, nor I ever sin in the words I say. And I wish this remains firm for me and never melts away. It is sweet to draw out one's life to its length in confident hopes and nourish one's spirit in bright cheerfulness. But I shudder to see you worn away and reduced by agonies without number. With no fear of Zeus in your own thinking, the regards you have for mortal men, Prometheus, is too high. Come, my friend, say, how can they return your favor with favor? Where is their help to save you? What age can there be from ephemeral men? And did you not see the feeble weakness to act dreamlike, with which the race of men has been hampered in their blindness? Never will the plans of men elude the ordered government of Zeus. I came to this understanding when my eyes saw the evil of your fate here, Prometheus. But man, but people, whom do I see, should I say, storm beaten here in bonds of stone? punishment. Tell me, where on earth, where on earth have I come in the wandering I endure? <sighs> I am stung again in this misery by some gadfly. Keep it away, away. As I see, as I see that cow herd with the countless eyes, he moves with cunning in his look. Even in death, the earth does not cover him, but in hunting me down in this misery, he, he has passed from the dead below, and he has sent me wandering in hunger over the sand by the sea, while his wax-bound reed pipe noisily drones its music to destroy my sleep. Oh! Oh. How I suffer. How I suffer. Where are my far wanderings leading me to? What, O oh son of Kronos, whatever did you find that I had done wrong to yoke me 
under these torments. An exhaust and derange me so, abject from the gadfly's driving terror. Burn me with fire, or bury me in earth, or, or give me to sea creatures to devour. Do not grudge me my prayers to you, my lord. I am well wearied enough by many, many wanderings. Nor can I learn in what way I am to escape my torment. I shall tell you clearly all you wish to learn. Without riddles woven in, but with plain words, as is right when opening one's lips to friends. You see the giver of fire to mankind. Prometheus. Oh, you who appeared as mankind's benefactor. Oh, wretched Prometheus, why are you suffering this punishment? I have only just stopped mourning my troubles. So, will you not make me this gift? Say what gift you seek. You may learn everything from me. Tell me. Who harnessed you fast in the ravine? The plan was that of Zeus, and the hand that of Hephaestus. And the penalty you pay, what was your crime? I do enough in making only this much plain to you. Well, also revealed my wandering to me, and, and how long the time of my misery will be. It is better for you not to learn than to learn this. Don't hide from me what I am about to suffer. Well, I don't begrudge you this gift. Then why do they telling me everything? I've no grudge. But I hesitate to put your mind in turmoil. Have no further worry for me. This will please me. Since you are eager, I should speak. Listen then. It's your job, Io, to gratify them. Above all, as your father's sisters. It's worth taking time to weep and grieve fully for misfortunes. Here in this place where one is bound to earn tears from one's listeners. I do not know how to refuse you all. With a clear tale, you will find out all you desire. And yet, I, I weep. Even to speak about the storm launched upon me by God. And the reason the ruin which I now endure swept suddenly over my form. Visions in the night came constantly into my maiden's chamber and kept blandishing me with sweet words. Girl, you are greatly blessed by him. Why so long, maiden, when, when you may have the greatest of unions? Zeus has been inflamed by a shaft of desire and, and wishes to make love with you, child. It is not for you to spurn. Zeus's pet. No. Go out into Lerna's deep meadow, to your father's herds and ox stalls, and relieve Zeus's eyes of their desire. Such dreams held me fast in misery every night, until, that is, I had the courage to tell my father of these dreams that appeared in the night. And he sent frequent sacred envoys to Pytho, and as far as Dodona. 
to learn what he should do or say to please the gods. They kept coming to report oracles that had shifting voices, spoke obscurely, and were hard to determine. But finally, a clear response came to Anakis, with definite instructions in its wording to thrust me from my home and fatherland. To be let loose to wander over Earth's furthest boundaries. And should he not be willing, Fiery lightning would come from Zeus to obliterate his whole line. Persuaded by such prophecies from Loxias, he drove and shut me out of the house against my will and, and his too. But Zeus's curb compelled him to do this forcibly. Straight away, my form and weight were sent awry. And I was stunned by the gadfly's sharp bite and rushed, maddened and bucking, to start his flow of good water and learn a spring. A cowherd, all born from the earth, all raw anger, accompanying me along my tracks, Argos watching me from his clustered eyes. Unexpectedly, a sudden death deprived him, deprived him of life. But stunned by the gadfly, I have been driven by a god scourge from land to land. You hear what was done to me. If you can say what remains of my ordeal, tell me. But don't warm my heart with false words out of pity. For I say that made up tales are the most shameful vice. No, stop. Never, never did I expect such strange tales to come to my hearing, nor such violent, fearful outrages so hired to watch and hard to bear to strike and pierce my heart with double sharpness. Oh, what a fate, what a fate! I shudder to see what has been done to I. You are too early with your lament, and with the fear which fills you, Hold back until you learn the rest as well. Say, tell it all. It pleases those afflicted to have clear foreknowledge of future pain. Your first request you gained from me easily. For your first desire was to learn Io's own account of her ordeal. Now hear what further suffering this young woman must endure at Hera's hands. And you, child. Take my words to heart, to learn the end of your road. First, turn yourself from here towards the sun's rising and make your way to unplowed lands. You will come to the nomadic Scythians, who live in woven shelters raised high on easy wheeling carts, and are armed with fire-shooting bows. But do not approach them. But across their land, and as you go, keep close to the rocky shores loud with the sea. On your left live the Chalibis, workers with iron. You should guard against them, for they are uncivilized and not for strangers to approach. You will come to the river Hebristes, not falsely named. Do not go over it, for it has no good way across. Before you reach the Caucasus itself, looking for its highest point when the river bursts out in force from the very peaks. You must pass over these summits that neighbour the stars, and go a southerly way where you will come to the Amazon's host with their loathing for men, who will one day inhabit the Mascara near Thermodon, where Salmodessus makes a rugged jaw into the sea, inhospitable to sailors, a stepmother evil to ships. These Amazons will guide your way, and very gladly. You will come to the Cimmerian Isthmus, at the very gates where the lake makes a narrow passage. You must leave it and cross the Maeotic Basin bold-heartedly. And there will be a great tale forever among mankind of your journey. 
and the Bosphorus will be called after your name. Do you not think the tyrant of the gods is equally violent in everything? Although he was a god who designed union with this mortal woman, you weighed these wanderings down on her. A cruel suitor you found for your bed, young maiden. For you must think of the account you have just heard as not yet even a prelude. Oh, why me? No! Here you are crying out. What in the world will you do when you learn the rest of your troubles? When you learn of the cruel and stormy sea of consuming torment. What use for me to live then? And why not quickly throw myself from this hard cliff to punch to the ground and be rid of my whole ordeal? It is better to die once and for all than to suffer miserably every day. You'd not easily bear what I endure when it is not my destiny to die. That would rid me of my torments. But now there is no end set for my agonies until Zeus is thrown from his tyranny. Why? Is, is it possible for Zeus, for Zeus to be thrown from his role? You'd be pleased, I think, to see this disaster for him. Of course I was, as one who suffers miserably through Zeus. Well, since these are the facts, you may rejoice. What will rob him of his tyrant's scepter? His very own empty-headed designs. In what way? Tell me, if there's no harm in it. He will make such a marriage as he will one day regret. What among gods or mortals? If it may be spoken, say. Why ask which? This may not be spoken aloud. Is he to be deposed from his throne by the way? Yes. One who will bear a son mightier than his father. And is there no averting this outcome for him? Indeed not. Unless it should be through my own release from bonds. So who is to release you if Zeus is unwilling? It is fated to be one of your descendants. How do you mean? Will a son of mine deliver you from this evil? Yes. One born from the third generation after ten others. This... this prophecy is becoming hard for me to understand. And do not seek to learn your own ordeal either. Do not offer me an advantage and then deprive me from it. I will reward you with just one of two accounts. Two? What kind are they? Uh, reveal them first and, and then give the choice to me. I shall give it to you, so choose. I shall tell you clearly either your remaining miseries or who is to set me free. Please agree to favor her with one of those and myself with the other. I don't think Neon would be told. Tell the rest of her wanderings to her and tell me who was to set you free. Since you are both eager, I shall not resist telling you all you desire. You first, Aya. I shall tell you your wonders, and your constant harrying. Write them in your mind's tablets of memory. Once you cross the flow banned in the continents, make your way beside the roaring sea towards the sun's fiery rising, until you reach the golden plains of Sisthene, where the Forsides dwell. Three long-lived maidens with hair white as swans, possessing one shared eye and a single tooth. Neither sun nor moon ever looks on them with its rays. Nearby are their three winged sisters, 
the snake-haired gorgons hated by men. No one who sees them will keep hold of life's breath. Such is the garrison of this place, I tell you. Now hear of a further barely tolerable sight. Be on your guard against the sharp-beaked, unbarking hounds of Zeus, the Griffins, and the host of one-eyed Aramaspian horse riders who live around the stream and golden flow of Pluto's river. Do not approach these. You'll come to a distant land, a black race which dwells near the sunlight's source. The river Ethiops is here. Make your way along its banks until you come to the cataract where the Nile discharges its revered, pure flow from the Bibline Mountains. The river will guide you to the three-cornered Nilotic land, and this is where it is your destiny, I and your children's, to establish your far distant colony. Many of this is said indistinctly, and is hard to comprehend. Go doubling back again and ask for clearer knowledge. I have more leisure than I wish. If you have anything left, tell her if it has been omitted of her long, crawl, wandering sake. But if you have said everything, then grant us in our turn that favor we are asking. You remember, of course. She has heard the end of her journey, all of it. But so she knows she has not been listening to me in vain. I shall tell what she has endured before she came here. Giving this in itself to prove my words. I shall leave out the great mass of the account and go to the very end of your wanderings. Now, when you came to the Molossian regions and Dodona on a steep ridge where the oracles and seats of the Sprotian Zeus are, and a marvel beyond belief, the speaking oak trees by which you were told in full clarity, and with no riddling that you were to be the glorious partner of Zeus. Does anything in this win me your belief? Next, in your gadfly frenzy, you rushed along the coastal path to the great gulf of Rhea, from which you have wandered back again on your stormy course. In future time, this sea's deep inlet, know this clearly, it will be called Ionia. A memorial for all men of your journey. These are the proofs for you. How my mind sees rather more than has appeared openly. The rest I shall tell you and I owe jointly. And return to the same track as my earlier words. There is a city, Canopus, by the Nile's very mouth and banked up silt. Here Zeus will restore your senses merely with a touch of a calming hand. You will bear dark-skinned Apophis, named for this begetting by Zeus, who will harvest all the land which the Nile waters with its broad flow. The fifth generation from him, one of fifty children, will come back to Argos unwillingly they will be women, in flight from kindred marriage to their cousins. These, their minds excited by passion, hawks closely in pursuit of doves, will come hunting marriages not for hunting, but the god will deny them possession of the women bodily. Each wife will take the life of her husband, getting a two-edged sword in slaughtered blood. I wish Aphrodite might come against my enemies like that. Yet one of the daughters will be bewitched by desire against killing her husband. Instead, she will have a resolve blunted. Of the two choices, she will prefer to be called a coward rather than a murderer. It is she who will bear a royal line in arms. It needs a long account to relate this clearly. But from this seedbed will be born one bold and famous with his bow. It is he who will set me free from these miseries. 
Such was the oracle my ancient-born mother recounted to me, the Titan's Themis. But how and by what means? To tell this is a lengthy account, and you will gain nothing from learning it. Onward! Mm, madness battering my senses inflame me again. And of the gadfly's fiery spear point pierces me. Oh, my heart. My heart is kicking inside me with fear. My eyes roll and spin dizzily. And I am carried, of course, by a furious blast of frenzy. I am powerless over my tongue. My, my words strike randomly in thick confusion against, against the waves of hateful ruin. Wise indeed, yes, wise was he that first pondered the thought in his mind and whose tongue said it in words that marriage within one's own kind was far superior. And no poor artisan should desire union with those either made effete by wealth or are vaunting themselves greatly on their scent. Never, never, O oh you fates, may you see me as a bed made of Zeus's couch, nor may I come as bride near any groom from heaven. For I begin to fear now I see the maiden I of hating her husband, consumed in cruel wandering, for ordeal from Hera. For me, when marriage is with an equal, it has no terror, and I do not fear. But I wish the inescapable eye of the mighty gods may not to look towards me. That is war beyond warring with, what it deals beyond dealing with. I cannot know what will become of me for I do not see how I might escape Zeus's design. Zeus shall yet be humble, I swear, for all his stubborn thinking. Such is the marriage he is preparing, which will throw him from his tyrant's throne into oblivion. And then the curse of his father Cronus will at once be totally fulfilled. His imprecation when expelled from his ancient seat. No god but I could show Zeus clearly how to avert such struggles. I know all this and the means. So now let him sit there in high confidence, trusting to his battering thunder high in the sky and brandishing in hand his bolts of blasting fire. For these will avail him nothing against an ignominious fall into a collapse past bearing. So strong a rival in the ring is he now making ready against his own self, portentous and quite invincible. One who will invent a flame more powerful than lightning. And a mighty crash, surpassing thunder. One to splinter Poseidon's three-time spear. When he dashes on this evil reef, he will learn how far apart ruling and slavery are. You are, of course, reviling Zeus with what you desire for him. With exactly what will be fulfilled. But I am saying too what I wish. And should we expect that someone will master Zeus? Yes, and Zeus will have struggles even more crippling than these. How can you throw out such words without fear? Why on earth should I be afraid? I am not fated to die. But Zeus might contrive an ordeal for you still more painful than this. Well, let him do that then. I expect everything. Those who humble themselves before Nemesis are wise. Go on. Pay your honours. Make your prayers. Give your flattery to one whose power is for the moment. I care less than nothing for Zeus. Let him act. Let him use his power for this short time as he wants. He will not rule the gods for long. But now I see Zeus as runner here. The new tyrant servants. They have doubtless come to announce some fresh unpleasantness. You. The clever one. 
The one so extreme, too extreme for his own good. The one who wrongs the gods by giving ephemeral men privileges. The thief of fire, I mean you. Father's use demands to know what marriage you are vaunting that would see him thrown from power. You will tell me this moreover with no riddling, but each detail as it is, and do not, Prometheus, impose on me a double journey. Father Zeus does not soften under such threats as these. This speech is pompous talk, and full of arrogance. As suits a god's servant, you are all new. New to power, and you think, of course, that you live in a citadel free of sorrow. Did I not see to tyrants expelled from it? The third I shall watch expelled is the one ruling now. It will happen most shamefully and most speedily. I don't seem to you, do I, to be all afraid and cowering before the new gods? No. I'm far from that, altogether far from it. Now you hurry back again on the road you came from, for you'll learn nothing of what you're asking me. You were also obstinate like this before, and it brought you to anchor in these torments. I wouldn't change my poor success for your servitude. Be quite certain. Better, I suppose, to be in servitude to this rock than to be Father Zeus's trusty messenger? It is a duty to return insult for insult like this. You seem to luxuriate in your present state. I luxuriate? I wish I might see my enemies in such luxury. And I count you among them. Why do you blame me too in some way for your disaster? In one simple word. I hate all the gods who came off well but maltreat me unjustly. I can hear the madness in you, it's no small illness. I'd happily be ill, if loathing one's enemies is being ill. You would be intolerable if you enjoyed success. Alas for me. That is a word Zeus does not know. Yet time as it ages teaches everything. And yet you still don't know how to be sensible yourself. No, for I would not be talking to you, servant that you are. It seems you'll say no word of what Father Zeus desires. And yet, if I owed him gratitude, I'd pay it. Now there you are mocking me like a child. Why, aren't you a child? And even more silly than that if you expect to learn anything from me. There is no torment or device by which Zeus will induce me to tell these things openly until these torturing bonds are released. Therefore, let him hurl his blazing flame, and embroil and confound everything in a feathery white snowstorm, and in thunderings in the earth. None of these will bend me into saying what is fated to throw him from his tyranny. Now see if this proves helpful to you. I've seen very long ago, and resolved on it. You rash fool! Bring yourself, alas, bring yourself to right thinking in the face of your agonies here. You're bothering me uselessly. It's like advising a sea wave. Never let it enter your head that my mind will weaken in fear of Zeus's intention, and that I shall employ this Zeus I greatly loathe to free me from these bonds with palms upturned. I'm far from all of that. I see if I am to speak, it is to be much to no purpose, for rather than relent and soften at my entreaties like a colt new to the harness, you gnash at the bit and fight violently against the reins. You are too headstrong when your stratagem is weak. A bedurancy in one with unsound thoughts has less than no strength on its own. But if you are not to be persuaded by my words, think of the kind of storm, the huge wave of disaster that will inescapably overtake you. First, Zeus will tear at this jagged ravine with thunder and fiery lightning and you will be buried bodily, and arms of rock will embrace you. After a length you will return to the surface where Zeus's winged hound, I tell you a tawny eagle, 
will tear greedily at the rag of your body, an uninvited daily banqueter who will feast on your liver, which is grown blackened from its gnawing. And do not expect any release from these tragedies until some god comes to succeed you through Hades, where there is no ray of light and into Tartarus's gloomy depths. Deliberate accordingly, for what I have said is no fabrication, but spoken all too surely. Zeus's lips do not know untruthful speech, and their every word is fulfilled. Look about you and ponder, and do not think of durancy better at any time than sound deliberation. To us, Hermes speaks not wide of the mark. They order you to abandon your obstinacy and to search for good and wise counsel. Be persuaded. It is shameful for one who is wise to go badly wrong. I knew, of course, this message they urged on me. But there is nothing unseemly in an enemy suffering badly from enemies. And so let the double fiery flare be hurled against me, and the heaven be convulsed by thunder and wild wind's fury, and by the blast shake the earth from its foundations, roots and all, and an ocean waves surging tumult block the orbits from the heavenly stars. May Zeus hurl me down bodily sheer into dark Tartarus in cruel spirals of compulsion, Killing me will be wholly beyond him. Exactly the sort of speech that one would expect to hear from those with stricken minds. Where does his prayer fail to hit the wrong note? Where ease back his madness? And those of you who sympathise with his agonies get you someplace far from here, lest Thunder's mighty bellowing should stupefy your senses. Make some other speech and exhort me only with what will actually persuade you. The word you slipped in there is quite intolerable. Like the word of me to practice cowardice. With Prometheus here, I am willing to suffer what must be. I have learned to hate traitors, and there is no plague I abominate more. Well, at least remember what I do predict, and don't blame fortune when you are hunted down by ruin. Nor I ever say that Zeus threw you into unforeseen disaster. No. Do not say that, for you have grown your own selves knowingly, and not suddenly or with unawares, and you have tangled yourselves in ruin's inescapable net through folly. Now, here is the reality. No longer mere words. The earth is shaking. Its depths echo the bellowing of thunder. Punches of lightning flash out pure fire. Whirlwind spiral with dust. Blasts from all the winds leap wildly about. Mutual discord displayed as they blow in opposition, and the heaven is confounded with the ocean. Such a storm hurled against me by Zeus creates terror as it comes too clearly. Most Holy Mother. O oh, heaven revolving the light common to all. Do you see how unjustly I suffer?
sky divine.